using my raising hammers of different weights. The metal is really placed against the stake and you're basically you're just hitting slightly above where the metal is resting and it brings brings each little section back down onto the stake. It's really as straightforward, straightforward as that. Okay, so obviously whacking it with a hammer is leaving a lot of marks. So even by the time, by the way, it'll take, each time you do a course of hammering, the work hardens up. So at that stage, you have to take it to the hearth and, and heat it up, which again softens it. That's really the only time that this piece of metal will leave my hands. So the whole thing is, it's such a, a sort of hands-on operation and also you're experiencing the form really from the disc until it comes into the shape that you want. So you've ended up with the form that you want, which has got lots of rough marks on it. So the next operation is planishing it and that's basically smoothing it off, although you're still left with a lot of very small hammer marks. Once I have the form, I'm using this really as my, um, my final sketchbook because I'm covering it in designer's gouache, which gives me a good surface to draw on. The design is drawn on the form. Um, I then, once I'm happy with the design, I will scribe it using, it's really a fairly blunt point, which goes through the paint and the pencil. I wash it all off. I will then heat up some pitch, which is a bit like road tar. This gets poured, poured into the vessel and then the chasing starts. Once, once this is set, once the pitch is set, it's actually giving quite a lot of support to the back of the metal. So then with the chasing tools, what you're doing is where your, your, your vessel is placed on a, on a pitch bowl, which is really the equivalent of a vice. It's, it's holding it very firmly. And with your chasing hammers, you're just coaxing the surface actually into the, into the relief that you want. And the thing I love about metal is this malleability that allows you just to sort of take it one stage further as long as you're keeping, as long as you're annealing the metal and keeping it nice and soft. The other thing I guess I really love about this, these two techniques is you're not, you're not imposing an image actually onto a form but you will probably see with this that with the malleability of the metal, you have this lovely sort of ghost image that's coming through. So the whole imagery is part of the, the piece of work itself. Anyway, once the chasing is done, it then gets sent off to Edinburgh Assay Office, which will, will test it to make sure that it's of the required standard of silver. And they will mark it, um, they'll mark it with the castle to show that it was made in Scotland. They will also mark it with the date letter, which shows you when it was made. They will give you the maker's name. And after that, when it gets returned to me, I send it off to my friend Steve, who puts this, this lovely layer of sunshine on the inside. And... At that stage, I send it off to the Scottish Gallery, where I hope one of these days I might be able to meet you and show you my work. Until then, I wish you very well. Goodbye.